So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jim McLaughlin, class of 93, director of athletics, and I couldn't be prouder to be standing up here before you today. Uh, we had another terrific year that we're going to celebrate uh, with our coaches, student athletes, and of course the highlight of the night with Eric McDowell. But uh, before I begin, I want to make sure that I acknowledge a couple of very special guests that we have with us here today and have been with us at so many of our events and other campus initiatives for students. Uh, first, our president, Stephen Ainley, and his wife, Judith Ainley. As I think back, President Ainley and his wife Judith have been with us now for nine years, and as I think back to just this past reunion weekend and hearing all the success stories, the state of the college, there's no doubt in my mind that the college could not be in a stronger position, and that's a testament to the leadership that two of these individuals have shown throughout their tenure here, so we thank them for that. I also want to acknowledge our Vice President uh, for Academic Affairs and Dean of the Faculty, Therese McCarty. Therese and I work very closely together in supporting the athletic department along with every other hat that she's wearing as well too, but you'll hear about a number of accomplishments from our teams, from individual student athletes, and one of the things you should realize that a lot of that is made possible by the support, guidance, and everything else that Teresa's office does for us. So thank you, Therese. As I look at uh, this past year, it, it's very tough in a, a small window to summarize the year, and You'll hear in detail from our sports information director, Eric McDowell, try to sum that up in a five-minute poem. But just a quick snapshot from this past year. Uh, one of the things that we had, we had four COSIDA All-Americans. And as I look at a COSIDA All-American, I think that's the pinnacle of achievement. Those are individuals who are achieving admirably in the classroom and at the top of their sports game as well, too. And I want to acknowledge those four individuals. Uh, they are from the baseball team, Kent Curran and Jake Fishman. Uh, I think one of the interesting stats that we just learned at the end of the year, Jake Fishman is the only student athlete in all of NCAA baseball, Division 1, 2, and 3, that is in the top 20 nationally for both ERA and pitching and batting as well, too. So just a very special accomplishment. We are making every effort to get him up to my beloved Red Sox uh, to see if we can make that work, but I think that's a lost cause, no doubt about that. Uh, other individuals, Cosida Academic All-Americans from the football team, uh, the heart and soul of the team and a great leader, great student, Thomas Hayes. And from the track and field team, an individual that by the time she leaves here may hold every union record uh, from the track and field program, Naomi Beishu. In addition, there were nine overall All-Americans, all uh, three league player or rookies of the year, one league coaching staff of the year, a league regular season champion, a league tournament champion, five team or individual NCAA appearances. We also saw a Hobie Baker finalist, a Goldwater recipient, the Daggett Prize winner, the birth of a very successful faculty mentor program, and a number of student athletes that were honored by New York State's Lieutenant Governor for their work on bystander intervention in the It's On Us campaign. And while we take a great deal of pride in those accomplishments, what, what we really feel great about is that it's athletics that's done the right way, uh, not cutting corners in any way. Uh, these are true, as our president says, uh, on all occasions, they're true scholar citizen athletes that make us so proud. And while they've done all of that work in the academic community and on the playing fields, they've also committed many, many hours to countless service. Uh, most notably, I think, has been their work with Kristen's Cause. Uh, Kristen is the daughter of one of our staff members on campus here who was stricken with Ewing sarcoma a number of years back, and our student athletes have rallied around her to raise more than $36,000 for the family to offset uh, medical costs and the costs of treatment for that family, which has been a great relief. 
In fact, one of our seniors last year uh, actually did her senior project on an adjustable prosthetic device that could be used for young individuals to try to reduce the costs of the ongoing costs associated with those prosthetic devices. Uh, cancer research has been another strong piece that our student athletes have committed to with Pink at the Rink, uh, the Dutchman Dip, the Home Run Derby, and a commitment to the Bone Marrow Registry. And uh, one of the things that we took a great deal of pride in just this past year is that one of our student athletes, a junior, Laura Pacheco, who participates on the women's lacrosse and field hockey team, uh, went through that bone marrow registry and she got the call to find out that she was a match for a two-year-old boy. And as we talk about here, many of us have gone through the swabbing process, but I think it's a much different story when you get the call to say that you can save somebody's life if you go through the surgery. She went through it in season and happy to report that uh, the young boy is doing well and she's an individual that just made an incredible difference in the life of this young man. So we applaud her for that. And th there's one other individual that I want to recognize here, an individual that is going to graduate on Sunday, uh, an individual whose career was cut short uh, as a result of being stricken with cancer. He was a tremendous uh, lacrosse player for us, an absolute all-star, and was dealt a very difficult hand. But needless to say, I, I don't think I've met a, a braver an individual uh, or somebody that has a better outlook on life, and that's Nate Greenberg. Nate, as many of you will see, will be the graduation speaker on Sunday, and uh, I had the privilege of a glimpse of his words, and uh, needless to say, I think it'll move many of us and give us a much different perspective on life. You know, when we talk about all of these successes of our student-athletes here, there's no doubt there, there's one reason behind it. It's, it's the people that are involved, and I want to make sure I thank everybody who's been so supportive of this department in helping us achieve our goals. First, it's been our associate and assistant directors, uh, my right-hand people who uh, manage the day-to-day -day operations of the department, Joanne Little, Beth Tiffany, and Adam Brinker. And our support staff, who without them, I can assure you that none of this would happen, uh, none of the buses or transportation or umpires or referees and the department would pretty much come to a stop without Kathy Natole and Marsha Catrambone. Our sports information office. Uh, you'll hear about many of the accolades that our students have received and uh, large credit obviously goes to the students, their work ethic and what they've done, but Eric McDowell and his staff, Daniel Jankowski, Phil Engel are the ones that support them, put them up for the nominations, and do a terrific job there. Our trainers, Cheryl, Eric, Brandon, and Jill, just a, a group that puts in countless hours for our student athletes, endures many late night road trips, and acts as team psychologists for many of our programs as well, too. And, an individual that I want to point out and recognize is Cheryl Rockwood. Cheryl's been with us here for 28 years. Uh, Cheryl was my trainer here when I was a freshman many, many years ago. And just this past a few weekends back at uh, the reunion weekend, she received the Faculty Meritorious Service Award for her service over the past 28 years. A significant accomplishment and well-deserved. There's our facility staff, Al, Pete, Barry, and Rachel. These are individuals that work so hard for our students to maintain our facilities, get them ready to play for the game that they love, and we appreciate their efforts as well. There's also the, a new group that I want to thank, uh, a new program, the Faculty Mentors, who we set this up this past year, and it's an initiative where faculty are partnered with teams to provide additional support for our student-athletes. Uh, faculty members become part of that team, and they've done a great job for us in year one. 
We have over 20 faculty members involved, and I really want to thank them for their efforts. I, I give them a lot of credit, too. I, I know a couple of the questions that I got when we first announced this was to say, do, do I get to help with substitutions or call plays or any of that? And they've been very good in that regard, so I'm happy to report. Uh, the coaches who provide great mentorship for our students and teach our students so much more than how to hit a ball or throw a ball. They teach them life lessons. They teach them about the game of life. They do a terrific job for us, and we're very fortunate to have them here. We had one of our coaching staffs that was recognized as league coaching staff of the year. That was women's lacrosse, led by Abby Jackson, Tony Garufi, and Taylor Hahn. So congratulations, that group. And then there's three individuals that I want to pay particular attention to, uh, three individuals that will be moving on that have had great careers here, uh, just great impact on many of our student athletes and whether it be for retirement or other obligations with family or work, uh, they're moving on but will always be part of this program. Uh, the first is from cross country, uh, John Houghton. Next is from men's and women's crew, Steve Eichfeld and somebody who's done a, just been a terrific mentor as well too from women's basketball, Mike Smith. And finally, uh, and we'll continue to thank you throughout this program, just a sincere thank you to the student athletes for their commitment, for their tireless efforts, for how they conduct themselves on a daily basis as ambassadors of this college. We couldn't be prouder of you, and we thank you for your efforts. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce our first guest, uh, our president, Stephen Ainley, who will uh, make a few remarks and also present the highest GPA award. President Stephen Ainley. Good afternoon. Uh, you know, Jim does such a wonderful job thanking everybody else, but of course, he's too modest to thank himself for the remarkable leadership that he provides to the athletic program at Union College. We should all be exceptionally proud of what this program is about. I certainly am. I hope you are. And would you please join me in acknowledging his leadership. I also want to just give one more round of applause to all the coaches, staff, and the leadership in, in, in athletics. Uh, again, we, we really have so much to be grateful for. And as I was saying to the faculty last night at a faculty appreciation event that we had in the Knott Memorial, it's not just the big things, it's the little things, the, the, the remark that shows that they care, the word of encouragement, the word of criticism when, we, when people need it and so forth. All that is really quite remarkable, and we owe them a lot. So again, round of applause for everyone. So I wouldn't be President Ainley if I didn't uh, recommend a book to you. Uh, I'm, I'm reading a book right now that I actually think you, you all should find time uh, over the summer to read. It's a book, a bestseller, by Daniel James Brown called The Boys in the Boat. Anybody? Yeah, good. It was recommended to me actually as I was standing on the banks of the Mohawk River watching our crew team, but it's a book that is way more profound than a story about crew. It is about crew and it's just fascinating. It's, a, it's an account of the, the uh, Olympic team, men's team, that, that rode at the 1936 Olympics in then Nazi Germany. And it's a remarkable accounting of all the things that went into them getting there, but Anybody who's spent a moment as an athlete will find it a, a, a truly remarkable account. I mean, it accounts for all the strained muscles, the stress on the skeletal system, uh, the whole point about building one's oxygen capacity. I, I don't know if you realize this. I didn't know it until I read this book that a oarsman, an Olympic oarsman has a lung capacity that is equal to a thoroughbred racehorse. Uh, which in its own right had me uh, totally impressed. But there's a chapter 13 that is in particular one that if you don't read anything else, read chapter 13. And the title of chapter 13 
is touching the divine. And what's interesting about that chapter is it talks about a phenomenon that if you haven't wrote, and I haven't, you, you can only relate to through the, the, the reading. It's, there's a moment apparently in, in a, when you're in crew, and we'll have to rely on all of you who do crew to, to say whether this is true. There's a moment when everything is going exactly right and you're pulling in rhythm and in perfect sequence. According to this book, it's called The Swing, that when you actually achieve the swing, there is a moment where you are literally touching the divine, that you will never forget it in your entire life if you have that feeling. And the point is, is that when you achieve the swing, a, a boat is going through the water in a way that almost feels effortless uh, because of this incredible coordination this incredible sequence of, 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 of events and so forth that all, all propel you through the water. And when you're just short of the swing, according to this book, it's a whole lot harder. That you're working a whole lot harder and you're, it's, it's just you know, not the right thing. Well, for me, it's a remarkable story because when I watch all of you in competition, there is the equivalent of the swing in every sport. There's that moment when as a unit, as a group, you have achieved something that you will remember for the rest of your life. That moment where you're working for a common purpose, where everything is going right, that you feel not like individuals, but you're working as a unit. And I guess the bottom line is that my wish for all of you is that no matter what, you had that one moment, at least while you were student athletes at Union College, where you touched the divine. I can tell you that there have been those moments for all of us watching you, where it feels that way, where we can see you working in unison and for a common purpose. But at the end of the day, that's probably the most important thing that you'll carry throughout all your lives as student athletes, having touched the divine. So again, I hope that's, that's true for all of you. So let me just uh, close my remarks by saying thank you for letting us get a glimpse at the divine through you. Uh, it, it truly has been a wonderful thing to watch all of you in, in action. Uh, and it is my great privilege to uh, present the first award of the day, which is the Presidential Academic Achievement Award. And I would say to you that you all, while one team is going to get this award, you all share in this award because part of the reason I'm so remarkably proud of Union Athletics is that there's no question that throughout the organization you see yourselves and act in a consistent way as student citizen athletes and, and believe me uh, a president couldn't be more proud especially as we see around the country so many examples of programs that don't represent that so all of you should take great honor and and certainly join me in congratulating uh, women's indoor track for receiving the academic achievement award this year Again, congratulations. Uh, we're sandwiched between rainstorms, one's today, one's on Monday, but I think we're going to be fine. Thank you, President Ailey, for all of the support you continue to provide for our students here. It's now my pleasure to bring up our Sports Information Director, uh, Eric McDowell, who will do a terrific job of summarizing the year for us. Eric? First, I want to personally thank both Daniel and Phil for the incredible job they do for all of you and all the other student athletes in our media. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Each year, we stand here and think about the highlights you produced and shed a tear. Because we will remember them, but won't see many of you again. I know it's your senior year. So let's rekindle what you and your underclass teammates accomplished, shall we? Through all your demands in class and in service and the events we love to see. Cohen raked in weekly awards and made opponent runners forlorn. The Dutchmen were strong on course and in class, 
led by Unterhalter and Zorn. You did not need a ventriloquist to talk about Ventrella. Her season was nice. And through the states and the regionals, you could count on Williams and Sice. Staridi and Mulvey poured in offense as opponent defenses endured strife. Miss Pacheco was an all-star, but even more so for her gift of life. Larova and Muse were defensive stars, and Jendel's was hardly gentle to foes. Thomas ran it in, and Reynolds caught the passes that led to high yardage flows. Rookie Strauss was a louse to opponent keepers, and so was a hunter named Sam. Carter kept the scorers at bay, and another all-star year for Faber? That's right, ma'am. Multi-all-star Bickford and defender Farland played with opponents' wits. And good luck trying to get a shot into the net past Miss Brustowitz. Pronchek was all league, and the winds poured over the net for shot. They also doubled up for a great duo, while Newman's serve said, ta-ta. Moeller was an All-American, region and league star, such a cool cat. Dollywall was a rare three-year captain, and count on Wyman, well, I'm sure of that. Hython was high above the rim as the league's rebounding king. Winnie joined the thousand-point club, and Burgess shots made the twine sing. Kate was great as the MVP, and another all-star was a rookie named Barra, named Jenny. Leone in the community and Schmier in class and the wins 17 were many. Champini was an All-American and joined Vecchieri with a point total of 50. Freshman Fu was impressive and Gingras academics and service, it was quite nifty. Lundberg saved the day and ranks among the NCAA's all-time leaders in stops. Valenti led the national academic team honors and reaped those community crops. Welsh had unions back as an All-American and major winner from New York State. Hoyt dove into All-American status, and Nadareski touched and won while opponents were late. Dimmitt dove into the record books, and Belforti helped the strong state championship show. Relays with Wright, Heminger, Brown, and Trojanowski, too, made Coach Felix glow. Cool runs through the states and ECACs made opponents chill. With 40, Woods and Zorn, the Dutchman relay highlight pages fill. As a league indoor track and field performer of the year, we could see the school records, the NCAAs. What a season for Beishu. Nice job, Noemi. Fishman's hitting was in the fours and his ERA in the ones to lead the league in both lines. He made all region as did Egan who had a 17-game history and 19 steals to make pitchers whine. Worthington was worthy and helped with Reinhardt, a league boat, boat of the week they did earn. Prescott, impressed as a scholar and a league rower, churned through the waters by the name of Elliot Earn. With Kelly at the oars, a petite final at the States did the Dutch woman win. Along with Jordan pulling away, and Kotowitz's great races included Hoffman. Ferguson got a Rookie of the Week and was Union's Golf's first medalist star. Hines won a third straight MVP, and in class, Miss Murphy was much better than par. All-Americans all for Laxman, Basil, Hall, Stanton, and Sands. Another NCAA home win, 14 triumphs and a great season. They deserved a lot of hands. NCAA 2 and a Liberty League title as McGrail ends a career among the best with another assist from Comiskey and the super saves from Grinhouse, they all passed the test. An all-time innings leader, Stats pitched an amazing year and finished second in career Ks. Corbin joined on the all-star team and drove in the runs and surely hit the ball a ways. League all-star Moore gave opponents less a chance of victory on the tennis court. Fontaine and Zaccareo doubled up and defeated other twin pairs who had to abort. Benjamin cleared the shot put mountain and Hurley tossed the javelin too. In the 4x400 relay, Murdoch, Dulce Moscalo, Strauss, and Fine just flew. 
Barnes, Barnhill, and Najar had a super relay season with a star whom you know, Miss Bayshu again. Plus, Samara led the field with her long javelin throw. Somewhere, as I speak, a little girl is playing, and a little boy is playing as well. They may be 15 years old or 10 years away from coming to this campus. It's just too soon to tell. But what I do know is what they will follow, the tradition and history of success, too. The work in the classroom, in our community, and in the playing arena. So good luck, and I really thank you. So, Eric, thanks for your terrific work on that every year. It's greatly appreciated. It's now my pleasure to begin the awards portion of the ceremony. And we start off with our first award, the Terry Lynch Jackie Haverkamp Katita Memorial Award. This is presented to the freshman female athlete who has shown leadership qualities as well as a commitment to sportsmanship. This year's recipient from the women's basketball team is a biology major that started in 24 out of 25 games and was a member of the league's all-rookie team and was the top freshman in the league in three-point field goals. From women's basketball, please welcome Jenny Barra. Freshman Athletic Prize, presented to a freshman male athlete for attitude, ability, and achievement in intercollegiate sports. This freshman cross-country standout made an immediate impact from the day he stepped onto the cross-country trail and finished as Union's top finisher in the Liberty League Championships. He was a three-time League Rookie of the Week and named Union Cross-Country Rookie of the Year and Team MVP. Please welcome Stephen Cohen. the Freshman Scholar Athlete of the Year Award for outstanding performance in the classroom, community, and playing arena. This year's recipient had a great rookie campaign on campus, both academically and athletically. A member of the swimming and diving team that swam the fourth fastest 200 fly in the history of Union, and she was a finalist in the New York State meet in the 200 fly. She is an engineering major with a 3.95 GPA, and she'll be an RA on campus next year. From the swimming and diving team, please welcome Jennifer Fromm. The Female Sophomore Athletic Prize, presented to a sophomore female athlete for achievement in intercollegiate athletics. The list of accomplishments for this individual is nearly endless. She is a member of the track and field program and already holds seven Union College records. Won the Liberty League Championship in the New York States in the 400 meter, was named the Liberty League Indoor Track Athlete of the Year, and participated in the NCAA Championships. Her times are currently ranked 11th in all of Division III, and she still has two more years to compete. She's a psychology major with a 3.9 GPA from women's track and field, Naomi Beishu. even comes up to the stage fast, as you see, so. The Harold R. Moore Sophomore Athletic Prize, presented to a sophomore male athlete for achievement in intercollegiate sports. 
This individual turned in one of the most impressive seasons in Union hockey history. He led the nation in shorthanded goals, tied the school record for points in one season with 50, and finished in the top 10 in the nation in scoring. From the men's ice hockey team, please welcome Mike Vecchioni. the Sophomore Scholar Athlete of the Year for outstanding performance in the classroom, community, and playing fields. This year's recipient has been a great contributor to the crew team's 2v8, and the program continues to make significant strides. In addition to his participation with the crew team, he is a Minerva mentor, tour guide, active participant in Habitat for Humanity, and the academics chair of Delta Kappa Epsilon. He's a member of the Scholars Program and a biochemistry major with a 3.95 GPA. From men's crew, Jack Bragg. Our next award is the ECAC Medal of Merit, presented to the junior female athlete who has achieved excellence in intercollegiate sports. This year's recipient is a two-sport athlete that had tremendous impact on both programs. She has started every game for both the women's soccer and lacrosse programs and helped both programs achieve great success. She has been selected as captain to lead the women's soccer team next season and will continue as a two-sport athlete while majoring in bioengineering. From women's lacrosse and soccer, Jessica Farland. The William Pike Class of 1960 Award, presented to a junior male athlete for achievement in intercollegiate sports. This individual turned in a stellar season on the diamond and was at or near the top of nearly every offensive statistical category. He had a 427 batting average, led the league in triples and slugging percentage, and finished second in the league in stolen bases. A physics major that has a very bright future ahead of him from the baseball program, Eric Egan. The Junior Scholar Athlete of the Year. This year we have two winners, and it's for outstanding performance in the classroom, community, and the playing fields. Our first recipient is a member of the women's basketball team who always seemed to come up with a clutch shot or loose ball. She started in 21 of 22 games and was named a Liberty League Player of the Week, along with honorable mention. She was the MVP of the St. Joe's Tournament and has been elected captain for next season. She is a member of the Union Scholars Program and possesses a 3.94 GPA in managerial economics and a plans, plans to apply, apply for a Rhodes Scholarship next year. We are happy to welcome her back to campus as she just returned from her term abroad in London where she also completed an internship with the Institute of Economic Affairs. From the women's basketball team, Kaylin Schmeer. Our second recipient is one of the hardest working individuals on the men's ice hockey team. He appeared in a career high in games this past year and was the recipient of the Thomas Van Arden Ducard Award for the team member with the highest GPA. He was honored to receive a Goldwater Scholarship this past year and possesses a 3.96 GPA in bioengineering from the men's ice hockey team, Teo DePauli. Accepting for Teo will be head coach Rick Bennett. <laughs> the 
The William B. Jaffe Athletic Award, presented to the senior male athlete, is voted by the athletic department to be the outstanding athlete of the year. This individual played a major role in the team's success over the last four years. He ranked in the top ten in the nation in four statistical categories. He tied a school record for points in a season with 50 and finished second in school history with 63 goals. He was an ECAC first team member, a Hobie Baker finalist, a senior class award candidate, and a first team All-American. He participated in the Hockey in Harlem community service event and started a program with a local hospital which allowed young patients and their families to attend Union Games. Please welcome Dan Champini. The Robert Ridings Memorial Award, presented to the senior female athlete recognizing the most outstanding female athlete of the year. This individual was a two-time MVP for the women's ice hockey team. She led the nation with a career-high 1,110 saves and ranks 20th all-time in NCAA history with more than 3,000 saves. She set the NCAA record for most saves in a shutout with 59 in a 1-0 shutout win at Northeastern. And she leaves Union as the program leader in wins, shutouts, and saves. She participated in numerous service opportunities, including Adopt a Family, Skate with the Dutch Women, Pink at the Rink, Bethlehem Youth Hockey, Stride, and the Dutchman Dip. From the women's ice hockey team majoring in psychology, please welcome Shanae Lumberg. the Women's Commission Senior Athletics Award to the female senior who has done the most to promote athletics for women at Union. This year's recipient literally carried the pitching load for the softball team as she led the conference in innings pitched, totaling 202 out of 229 innings and threw a no-hitter during the year. If that wasn't enough, she batted 370 with a 538 slugging percentage and a 441 on-base percentage and perhaps what was one of my favorite moments of the year uh, on senior day, she hit a walk-off home run to win the game versus RPI and propel the team into the Liberty League playoffs. From the softball team, Allison Stats. The Director's Award for Leadership, for outstanding leadership on the fields of competition and in the campus community. This individual has been one of the greatest leaders of a team that I've seen during my years here. He was a two-time team captain that played an integral part in the team's greatest four-year run in school history. During his career, he was a three-year starter in goal, was named an All-American in the Liberty League Defensive Player of the Year. He will be participating in the U.S. Lacrosse North-South game and was a U.S. Lacrosse Scholar All-American and is a double major in political science and history. From men's lacrosse, please welcome Stefan Basile. Award for Community Service, Outreach, and Leadership. This individual may go down as one of the kindest and happiest students we have had on this campus. He played an integral role in the lacrosse team's string of success over the last four years, but his greatest impact involves service initiatives within the community and beyond. He has participated in Habitat for Humanity, Campus Kitchens, Friendship House. He was co-coordinator of the Empty Bowls Project, 
organized bystander intervention training, involved in the National Bone Marrow Registry Initiative, and assisted in leading his team in the It's On Us initiative. He was also a volunteer intern with Field of Growth International, a program in Kingston, Jamaica that organized local lacrosse games. Essentially, he tried to make a difference, and as a result of his efforts, earlier this spring, he was honored at the annual Schenectady County Human Rights Commission Awards Breakfast. Please welcome Adam Rosenthal. The Award for Academic Excellence. This year we have two recipients. Our first recipient is a member of the men's soccer team and he received the Brian T. Baker Class of 88 Award which honors the highest ideals of sportsmanship and leadership on and off the field. He also had a major impact in the classroom and in the community. He organized a community health field day in Schenectady over the past two years, educating area youth about the importance of nutrition and healthy activities. He volunteered hundreds of hours in a nursing home, spending time with residents and organizing activities. He was a gatekeeper for admissions and has held an RA position since his sophomore year. He's a biochemistry major with a 3.82 GPA from men's soccer, Travis Barker. Our second recipient was a three-sport athlete with cross-country, indoor, and outdoor track and field. He has accomplished much in his four years on campus and was an integral member of the Union's Engineers Without Borders chapter to assist in helping local communities recover from hurricanes. He has studied abroad in both Japan and New Zealand while also conducting significant research on campus. He has compiled numerous awards including the John Hadala Endowed Book Prize, the Junior Academic Achievement Top 50, the U.S. Geological Survey Performance Award, and just recently a prize day was awarded the Josephine Daggett Prize, which is selected by the faculty and awarded annually to the senior deemed to be of best character and conduct. He's a mechanical engineering major with a Japanese minor and possesses a 3.88 GPA. He will begin his PhD at the University of Colorado, where he will be working on a project in conjunction with the U.S. Department of Energy's National Renewal Energy Laboratory. Please welcome Kaylin LaPointe. And our final award is the Senior Scholar Athlete of the Year. It's awarded annually to a senior student athlete for outstanding performance in all areas. This is our highest honor and will be presented to two very deserving individuals. The first recipient was the team MVP of the women's soccer team and displayed great leadership being named a two-time captain. She started 66 out of 68 possible games in her career and scored a total of 20 goals, nine of those being game winners. She was all Liberty League first team and a member of the league's all academic team in her sophomore, junior, and senior seasons and was recognized upstate and all east region teams in her senior year. She has been actively involved in Habitat for Humanity and participated as a gatekeeper for three of her years on campus. She's a political science major with an economics minor and carries a 3.6 GPA. Please welcome Whitney Bickford. Our second recipient has been a three-year starter for the women's lacrosse team and was the backbone that led the team to the regular season title, 
a Liberty League championship, and a berth in the NCAA tournament. She has participated in numerous service initiatives on campus and led the alumni speaker series, setting up presentations from alumni talking about their time at Union and how it led them to prominent careers. She has participated in a number of summer internships, including spending a summer with a global Clinton Global Initiative, a political science major with a psychology a political science and psychology major possessing a 3.83 GPA, Kim Grinhouse. So one more final round of applause for the terrific accomplishments of these student athletes. It's now my pleasure to welcome Travis Barker and Kim Grinhouse to speak on behalf of the student athletes. Travis, Kim. Before I begin, I'd like to thank Mr. McLaughlin, President Ainley, Vice President McCarty, the alumni, and Mr. McDowell for their care, for care and leadership of athletics. I'd also like to thank the trainers and Coach Gableman, for without them, many of us wouldn't be standing. And finally, I would like to thank all of you for allowing me to speak. I had a soccer coach during my youth years who would say, your teammates should be someone you want to go to war with. While this statement on the surface may seem extreme, especially when it was being said to a group of 11-year-olds, I believe the concepts it conveys are vastly important, mainly support, hard work, commitment, and acceptance. Athletics are no easy endeavor, especially if one wants to play at the collegiate level. Moreover, I'd argue that playing athletics at the collegiate level is drastically harder than anything we did to actually get here. There was no time for the, ah, we've made it moment. There may have been the, ah, I made the team moment, but that was quickly followed by, fudge, I have another week of three days and then school. Or sugar, I have a paper and exam due tomorrow. But there was certainly a minimal amount of time to soak it all in. That being said, that typifies who we are and what we've done for our whole lives. Transitioning from sport to sport with the changing seasons and oftentimes playing on multiple teams at once. Through these teams, we've made connections that will most likely stay with us for the rest of our lives. They pick us up when we're down and celebrate with us when we succeed. Union is no exception to this. Oftentimes, as I'm sure many of you are as well, when discussing my college career, I'm asked, how do you balance athletics and academics? I've always struggled a bit to answer this question, giving the typical answers of time management or fighting off car sickness to read on the bus. However, while these may have played a role, they are minor compared to that played by my teammates, coaches, and fellow athletes. I found that soccer was the easiest thing to balance with my schedule, whether it was a 6 a.m. lift at the TJC Dome or coming back on campus well after midnight after a game. Soccer and my team function as a reprieve from academics and everyday life. On the field, nothing else mattered. That quiz that you may have failed or the project that was due the next day receded in the background. All that mattered was supporting and working for your teammates and coaches because you knew they were doing the same for you. This camaraderie extends far beyond the field and individual teams. When I put on a field day for the youth in Schenectady and reached out to athletics for volunteers, I had more athletes than kids attend. One of my favorite events in the spring is run ribs and reggae and seeing all the sports teams come out and run, supporting the trainers who organize it and raising money for Children's Hospital at Albany Medical Center. However, 
One of my all-time favorite memories in my time here is witnessing the impressive turnout at the Dutchman Dip, supporting Nate Greenberg, Justin Lloyd, Caitlin Suarez, and Christian Schinnebarger. This somewhat extended tangent brings me back to my point of soccer being the easiest thing to balance with my schedule. Not only did soccer offer an escape, it provided a support network. It introduced me to a collection of athletes that I would excuse the corniness of this, but go to war with. I had and have seen you all put in the work, the commitment that you've designated to different causes, and most importantly, the support that you've offered to your teammates and fellow athletes. It was the knowledge that whatever work I put in would be paid back by tenfold by every athlete, coach, and trainer in this audience that made being a student athlete a profoundly rewarding experience. While it's taking actually sitting down and writing this speech for me to be able to vocalize this, it is something that I wholeheartedly believe and want to thank you all for. So thank you and good luck in your future endeavors. Thank you, Travis, for the heartfelt comments. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kim Grinhouse. Okay. Those are some big shoes to fill, but here it goes. Um, I would also like to start out by thanking our athletic director, Mr. McLaughlin, President Ainley, Mrs. Ainley, Vice President McCarty, our training staff, Cheryl Joe, Eric Brando, Beth Tiffany, Gableman, and Mr. McDowell. Welcome family, friends, and student athletes as well. When Mr. McDowell first approached me to speak today, I honestly had no idea what I would say. How do I even begin to enca encapsulate my total athletic experience in just a short amount of time? After all, my student athletic experience here at Union has defined so much of my four years. So here's my best shot. Graduation is a time to look forward to our next endeavors, but we must all take a second to look back and ask ourselves, was the moment worth it? As an athlete, everyone has his or her moment. For some in the room, it may be winning the Division I national hockey title last year. For my teammate on the lacrosse team, Emily McGrail, it may be the moment she scored her 200th goal. For the football players in the room, who could forget sophomore year when you rightfully claimed the shoes from RPI in a dramatic double overtime victory? Or just this year, the men's lacrosse team beat National Powerhouse Cortland for the first time ever. These are just some of the defining moments and accomplishments that are forever ingrained in our minds when we think of our athletic experience here at Union. So, was the moment, that moment, worth it? For me, my moment happened just a short five weeks ago. This past year marked the best regular season for the women's lacrosse team during my time here at Union. We are an undefeated 9-0 in the Liberty League and earned the number one seed in the conference tournament. Although we do not like to dwell on the past, our team did not have the best recent track record in postseason play. In the previous three years, we made the tournament twice, and both times suffered, suffered devastating losses to, you guessed it, RPI. But this year was different. The culture, atmosphere, dedication, and overall commitment towards our goal of winning a conference title was greater than ever before. Of course, we had our doubts. Our path to the title would include at least one, and most likely two, games against teams that we had narrowly defeated in regular season play. As our season reached the final stages, one of our captains, Emily McGrill, began comparing us to the undefeated University of Kentucky men's basketball team as they simultaneously made their bid towards a national title. As our expectations grew, she would always keep us in check by, by reminding us of the old sports adage of the difficulty of beating a team twice in one season. However, unlike those Wildcats, us Dutch women turned our fantasy into reality. A victory over Skidmore on Frank Bailey Field clinched a perfect 11-0 league record and the Liberty League Conference title. As the celebrations began, I finally got to hold the trophy, which was really a plaque, but beautiful nonetheless. The last time the words Union College appeared on it was in 2006. I stood there holding the plaque, grabbed it real tight, and kissed it. As the picture was flashed, I realized that was my moment. I didn't know that four years ago, as I entered my freshman year at Union, I didn't know that four years ago as I entered my freshman year at Union. Back then, I was just excited to meet my new teammates and form the relationships I knew would turn into my family. As a sixth-generation Union student, I chose Union not only for my family's love of the school, 
but for the unique opportunity to continue my passion for lacrosse at a high academic institution. While everyone was ready to begin playing together that fall, I was sidelined. I came to school just months after tearing my right ACL at the end of my high school career. Although I knew I would be ready in time for the regular season at Union, the endless hours of rehab pain and doctor's visits were a daunting road ahead. However, I had four years, or so I thought, of, regular, of lacrosse ahead of me, and that's what kept me motivated and on course. At the beginning of my junior year, I decided to take advantage of the opportunity to go abroad. As I headed to York, England, I was reminded by coach not to forget my stick, train, and stay in shape for the upcoming spring. Being away from the field that fall was tough, but it made me all the more excited to come back in the winter and get to work. The night before the first day of preseason, I couldn't sleep, anticipating the feeling and rush of adrenaline shooting through my body as I made a save. At practice the next evening, I was feeling on top of the world. My hands were moving quicker than ever before. The adrenaline was definitely back. However, it would shortly all come to a stumbling halt. I'll never forget it. Left side of the crease, low angle shot going top left corner. My hands shoot out first and then As I fell to the ground, I knew exactly what had just happened. I had only ever heard that noise and felt that excruciating pain one other time in my life. Eric ran over to me and tried to convince me not to jump to conclusions, but I knew better. My left ACL was now torn. An athlete's worst nightmare come true. Everything I had looked forward to as I returned from England had been ripped out from underneath me. Immediately, feelings of doubt ensued. Was, the end of my athletic, was this the end of my athletic career at Union? Should I, could I return to the field and regain my form? Was it possible for me to exist, exist at Union without my connection to lacrosse? Did I have the internal strength to rehab for the second time and make it back out onto the field? I struggled to come to grips with everything that had happened. At that moment, my second torn ACL defined who I was as a student athlete. Once I got past my lingering indecision and despair, which Mr. McLaughlin knows a lot about, I was resolute to create a different ending. While addressing a crowd of Dartmouth graduates, Conan O'Brien said, few things, are far, are, few things are more liberating than having your worst fear realized. It is our failure that ultimately defines us and makes us unique. Although one of my worst athletic fears was realized, Conan was prophetic because my momentary failure is ultimately what makes my story of overcoming injury to reach my sports pinnacle unique. For me, the picture of me kissing the plaque encapsulates my athletic experience at Union and everyone who had a helping hand in making it happen. That picture, but also that feeling isolated in time, will be everlasting. So as I tell you about my moment, I would like all of you to think of yours. Because after two ACLs, three surgeries, 2,006 eight minutes in net, and 308 saves, I stand here today confident that my moment was definitely worth it. Congratulations on yours. Thank you. I'm afraid to walk now. I'm so nervous after that. Let's give a big hand to our senior speakers, Travis and Kim. Now it's the seniors' turn, all of our seniors, and we're going to be joined on stage. We appreciate President Ainley and Vice President McCarty coming up to greet each of you, the seniors, as well as Mr. McLaughlin and the trainers. We'll give you one last little gift and one last little hug and farewell. So now, one of my highlights of the year. Let's introduce the 2015 Union College Senior Student Athletes, and I do ask to please hold your applause until the completion. Thank you. We start with Austin Anderson of Crew. Mary Arnold, Cross Country. Travis Barker, soccer. <laughs> Stephen Basil Lacrosse. Right 
Mark Bennett, Ice Hockey. Kevin Benevegna, Basketball. Courtney Berg, Lacrosse. Whitney Bickford, Soccer. Allison Brustowitz, Soccer. Caroline Brustowitz, Soccer. Ryan Carter, Soccer. Daniel Champini, Ice Hockey. Sam Cota, Ice Hockey. Lindsay Cohen, Softball. Camille Corbin, Softball. <laughs> Jenna Cornwall, Soccer. Alex DiMario, Lacrosse. Ian Davies, Cross Country. Andrew D. Philippus, Football. Tyler DeWaltoff, Soccer. Repreet Dellywall, Volleyball. Michael Donatio, Tennis. Kira Dudek, Lacrosse. Connor Eck of Football. Megan Erdman of Basketball. Elliot Earn, Crew. Madeline Freeze, Track and Field. Julian Jendels, Football. Molly Gilchrist, Soccer. Anders Getz, Baseball. Haley Gould, Lacrosse. Richard Gregory, Lacrosse. Kim Grinhouse, Lacrosse. Connor Hall, lacrosse. <laughs> Kyle Henney, football. Kevin Heaney, football. Margaret Hoffman, crew. Jonathan Hunt, crew.
Kelsey Hyde, cross country, track and field. Kevin Jansen, soccer. Kyle Kalanta, football. Cameron Kelleher, cross country, track and field. Thomas Kolb, crew. Kaylin LaPointe, cross country. Chad Lostrup, football. Jamie Liu, swimming and diving. Timothy Lucy, football. Janae Lundberg, ice hockey. Andrew Luzzi, football. Kara Mashuda, soccer. Emily McGrail, lacrosse. Kelly McGrath, ice hockey. Benjamin McQuaid, football. Julia Meyer, lacrosse. Kara Modlazuski, soccer. Tyler Murphy, football. Christine Murphy, golf. Casey Muse, football. Hannah Najar, field hockey, track and field. Annie Nelson, lacrosse. Max Novak, ice hockey. Nate Onan, cross country, track and field. Brian Panchuk, ice hockey. Nicholas Pierce, football. Dylan Pieri, ice hockey. Christopher Pignatello, baseball. Will Poach, soccer. Jordan Pulling, crew. Nicholas Rielli, football. Kyle Reynolds, football. Adam Rosenthal, lacrosse. Charles Ross, lacrosse.
Jeremy Sagai, swimming and diving. Adam Sands, lacrosse. Ben Saperstein, swimming and diving. Dylan Shuck, football. She Shana, crew. Julia Shively, soccer. Sydney Somera, track and field. Allison Stats, softball. Colin Stevens, ice hockey. Michael Strohecker, football. Patrick Sullivan, football. Stacy Silvetsky, soccer. Alex Tankrell Fontaine, ice hockey. Darnell Thomas, football. Kate Thompson, basketball. Ann Trojanowski, swimming and diving. Allison Troy, field hockey. Maxwell Unterhalter, cross country, track and field. Christine Valenti, ice hockey. Charlie Vesituro, ice hockey. Jeremy Vick, cross country, track and field. Anthony Vidiello, football. Eric Ward, cross country. Haley Welsh, ice hockey. Andrew Welsh, swimming and diving. Rebecca Williams, cross country, track and field. Terrell Winnie, basketball. C.J. Worley, baseball. Matt Worthington, crew. And Grant Zaccario, tennis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one more time. Let's hear it for your Union College 2015 senior student athletes. Thank you.
So everyone, just before we depart, I, I just want to say thank you one more time for how you've continued to represent us, and I look forward to working with you as fellow alums in the very near future. Uh, we have a reception following this at the Knott Memorial, and one thing I'd ask is that any of the award winners from today please gather on stage for a group photo. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.